Good day guys. I've had a few questions about the snares that I'm running. So I thought I'd kind of make a short video, kind of touch base about it. So when you purchase power rams, you always get one, one snare per ram. And I had purchased some wolf rams this year and got these with it. So what this is, it is a 1x19, 564 cable. And it's 58 inches long. Now, in our province, we have to have breakaways. So this is running a Sullivan S hook, which is a 280 pound breakaway. So I make all my own snares. Now, this is a coyote snare and this is a wolf snare. I call them wolf snares. I don't actually snare wolves. I still snare coyotes, but it's just cause it's running on a, a wolf ram. So that's why I just call them that. But I've had a few guys ask me about my support wire. So what it is, I believe this is 18 gauge wire. Now what I'm doing is I make a J and I hook it around my ferrule right here. Then I wrap it around twice, make a little bit of a bridge. I'll clamp that with the pliers on my heat treated nut and then I'll just spin it around my snare, do my twists. Now what that enables me, because I have the J there and my twists, it strengthens that right up. Because sometimes you'll have a ram, depending how it's set or whatever else, or even how it's just sitting in the ram, your snare will be cocked off a little bit or crooked so that's all fine like that because I have this set up the way I do I can just take a pliers and bend it and it will correct that snare to hang true up and down so that's kind of how I run mine but you can see the difference between the wolf ram and the coyote ram the, just the absolute length of that now with these actually I should talk about this first with the uh, the coyote snare, the manufacturer recommends 47 inches length of cable. Now what these are, it's one by seven, 364 aircraft cable. Now the manufacturer is calling for 47 inches long. Uh, I always make mine 46. I make it an inch shorter. My theory behind it is that there'll be just a little bit more torque on that spring um, when it actually has tightened around the animal's neck just to make sure it's cutting that blood supply off to put the animal down. And uh, with these wolf rams or wolf snares, wolf snares are between 58 and 61 inches, depending on the cable, depending if they're using S hooks or, or how they're doing it. Now you got to remember a wolf's neck is quite a bit larger than a, a coyote neck. So I automatically cut it down two inches shorter just to make it compatible for a coyote neck. Now, I also cut it down one inch on top of that yet, just to make sure, same principle as a coyote, coyote ram, that I get a little bit more torque from the springs on the coyote itself. See, most people think that a snare actually chokes the animal out, and it doesn't. Yes, I, I guess suppose it, it could choke it out, but the theory behind a snare is that when it tightens on the animal's neck, it is actually cutting off the blood supply to the carotid arteries, thus rendering the animal will basically pass out and it will go unconscious and it will die from a lack of blood to the brain. So with these support wires, what I do, is, especially with these wolf rams, I love it that I got that length the way I do. Because I can move my ram off the trail a little bit further, or if I hide my ram parallel to the, to the coyote trail, but behind the tree, I can bend my ram or my support wire 90 degrees, thus hiding the ram behind the tree. And I can still get that good length or good stretch out to that trail. And then just I just have that snare hanging there. So it seems to work pretty well for me. I, I really like it. But um, what else? The size of my snare, I guess... Roughly is about nine and a half inches. You can tell on the Wolfram. I've made them just a hair bigger. Um, I still keep the bottom of my snare, whether it's the Coyote Ram or the Wolfram. I still keep it about 10 to 12 inches uh, above the bottom. Some guys have commented wondering if I'm running my snares a little bit too high. And that is a good question. So one thing I've done in the past when I first started snaring, um, Say you go out and catch a coyote, okay, you take him out of the snare, you reset everything. Yes, he's going to be frozen in a little bit different position, but stand him up right against your snare. You'll have a pretty good idea 
if you're way too high or if you're way too low. Some coyotes obviously are taller than others, but the distance between the bottom of my snare and my top, I don't know, is about 13 inches, give or take, is what it is. So you've got a lot of movement there. You don't want to be too high because they'll always go under. I always put a chin stick or depending on the situation, but... So hopefully this this helps with a few questions that guys have been having. I also wanted to um, make a big shout out to Old Greybeard and Curly Beard. They have a YouTube channel and it is Timmins Trapper. Um, I really enjoy watching their videos. I made a shout out to them on my last video, but my editing skills aren't up to par, so that video no longer exists. I also wanted to make a big shout out to Team Ambush. Um, I've watched a few of your videos and you guys sure put the hurt on those coyotes. You guys got a lot of great videos. Both those channels I enjoy watching. They, they got a lot of great content on there. And and you guys have a, have a look. Give them, give them a thumbs up. Give them a like. So, but with that, hopefully, hopefully I've covered everything. If you guys have any more questions about anything, um, comment on the YouTube YouTube channel or find me on Facebook private message me whatever um, I, I appreciate all the comments all the feedback and I appreciate everybody watching until the next time guys thanks